Okay, so now come close to me. Like come towards me. Okay. So I'll give you the muzzle. Okay. We'll get the muzzle on. So we got the muzzle on. I'm also getting them to change the leash because they got a, a stretchy leash. Okay, this way, this way. All right, so you you take them, you take them, and you come and take the camera. Yeah. So you just videotape what we do. Okay, sure. Yeah. Stubborn. He's gonna see, right? It's, I'm not in danger. He's gonna understand. He's, he will understand. I'm not in danger. Let's go in the car, maybe. But we are.
That makes me cry. <laughs> This is Illy. This is his first night here. He's a very reactive dog, as you saw on the leash. Fearful of people. Well, considered fearful of people. Um, so, one thing about these dogs, it's definitely personal space. If they don't trust you, respect you, they do not want you in their personal space. They do not want you to touch them, lean over them, move towards them, look at them. Nothing. It's not fear. It's based in dominance. Only dominant dogs are this way. Reactive. And if that dog is moving toward you like Illy was on the leash, they're not fearful. A fearful dog never moves towards you, and a fearful dog never holds its ground. A fearful dog also will never bark at you. They'll never nip you, and they'll never bite you. They just want you to leave them alone. They will always move away from you. And they won't bark because that brings attention to themselves, and the last thing they want is attention to themselves. Dogs like Illy, reactive dogs that move forward or hold their ground, are not fearful. They're insecure, dominant dogs. Most of them. When you have a dog that moves towards you, like Illy, but then you move towards it, you stand your ground, and, and, and they don't come in, um, they'll stop or they'll back up. That's uh, like a low-level beta dominant dog or an insecure dog, higher level beta dominant dog or an insecure dominant dog. Confident dominant dogs don't stop. They just keep coming. They come right at you, they get you. So, one of the things people do the most in trying to show affection to a dog is petting them on the top of the head. But dogs don't pet each other on the top of the head. Um, you'll never see a mother dog petting her puppies on the top of the head to show them affection. And you'll also never see her hug them like we hug our children. A mother dog licks their neck. So when you try to touch a dominant dog, especially an insecure dominant dog, on the top of the head, <coughs> lean over them, move into that personal space to within a foot of them, try to touch them, try to touch their back, try to do their nails, anything like that. They're either going to move away from you while barking or maybe not barking. They're going to hold your ground but move their head And if you continue to try to pet them, they'll nip you or bite you. And some of them, as soon as you try to pet them on the top of the head, they're just going to bite you. And a lot of times with no bark. Those are the alphas. The ones that hold their ground and nip and bite if you continue to try to touch your betas. The ones that move back, or move away, or cower, are either insecure betas or they're the lowest level of dominant dogs, which is the submissive dominant dog. So Illy is a dog that you definitely could not pet on the top of the head. And he would bite you if you tried. Well, he wouldn't bite you. He'd nip you. And there's a difference between a nip and a bite. So, again, this is his first night here of... Um, been with them on the bed here for about 20 minutes. Um, 
licking his neck. Not trying to pet him on the head or anything, just uh, licking his neck. And I'll show you that in a minute. And what I've been waiting for is for him to relax like this. When they're lying down, they lay their head down. That's level one relax. You see his ears, they're not pinned, that's relaxed. Now, he's not fully asleep. When he goes to sleep, that's level zero. So right now he's in level one. So, by being respectful to him and understanding that he doesn't like anybody leaning over him, trying to touch him, trying to pet him on the top of the head or anything like that. By me not doing that, that starts to develop the trust-respect relationship. But when I lick him on the neck with my fingertips, that's establishing trust. Any relationship, especially your relationship with your dog, has to be based on trust and respect. And they're not going to respect you unless they trust you first. And we always use a, affection to build that trust. Now, when you have a dog like Illy who won't let you touch them, how are you supposed to make that connection for the dog? that your touch means physical affection. You're not trying to hurt them. You just want to love them. But every time you try to touch them, they growl at you, bark at you, nip you, or bite you. People think the dog is aggressive. The dog is mean. No, the dog sees you as being aggressive. The dog sees you as being mean because you're disrespecting them by trying to touch them on the top of their head or hug them, lean over them, all that stuff. You have to hold your hand out, palm up, low. And a, a normal balanced dog, as soon as you hold your hand out, they'll come to you, they'll smell your hand, and then they'll touch your hand with their head. They'll either lick it or they'll touch it. Somehow they'll touch your hand. In order for them, or when they touch your hand, what's happening there is they're entering your personal space, your intimate personal space. They're touching you. See? By allowing me to touch them, because there's sometimes where I, I don't want the dog to touch me, like I'm carrying a hot cup of tea. I don't want a dog to touch me. I could spill my tea. If a dog does try to come in and touch, even if it's for affection, I'll correct them to say, no, you can't touch me right now. I got hot tea. I don't want you to get burnt. That's the conversation I'm having just with that tss. Just with that tiss noise, that's it. So, because I'm not correcting the touch, that means I'm accepting the touch. And, and the personal space thing is you cannot enter a dominant dog's personal space without their permission or acceptance. So, if I'm holding out my hand palm up, I am giving them permission because I'm asking them to come to me. Not not just come to me. I'm asking them to come to me so I can give them a hug. That's the whole point. Come to me so I can give you a hug by licking your neck. But as that dog comes in and touches me, then I'm accepting it. And that's why you have to let the dog touch you first. Most cases, most scenarios. You have to let the dog touch you first. And that shows that that dog trusts and respects you enough that it's willing to enter your personal space and touch you. Okay. So, he's already experienced me licking his neck. We're already starting to develop the relationship with the mother. But he has baggage. He has a history. He has a negative association with people. So we have to develop a positive association with people. And the basis of that positive association has to be affection. He, we want him to understand 
that when people try to pet him on the top of the head, it means the same thing as his mother licking the neck. But in order for him to make that connection, for him to understand that, he has to experience being petted on the top of the head as he has his, le uh, his neck licked. Right? So, I'm just going to reach now to pet him on the top of the head and see what his reaction is. Right? Now, you always come in slow. You don't come in hesitant. You don't hesitate. You don't worry he's going to bite you. Because if you worry he's going to bite you, he, he might bite you. Right? You don't trust me. I don't trust you. You know? So you just come in calm. And the touch is very gentle. So you see, he just, first thing he did was open his eyes and, and looked up. And then very slowly just brought his head back to see what is that? What's going on? Why, why are you touching me there? See? It's, his, his, his eyes are kind of opened up three quarters. It was just a little of concern. Now, I saw that. I acknowledged that by immediately stopping touching him. Again, that conversation is, oh, I see me touching you there. Makes you uncomfortable. It makes you concerned. So I'll stop touching you there. And what happens? He goes back to level one relaxed. Because I'm not looking at him. Looking at the wall, looking out the window. I'm looking at everything but him. And if I do look at him, I close my eyes and I soften my eyes. So now I reach out to pet him on the head again. Let's see what the reaction is this time. Same thing, see? All right. So instead now, I'll lick his neck first. Now I should come out with my right arm, but he's too close to me and I got really nowhere to move. <clears throat> so I'm just going to come with my left hand cupped up. So my hand is still coming in palm up, see? And I come in, you see? He's not used to that. He's used to me using my right hand, right? So again, I see that reaction. I bring my hand back. I acknowledge that. Yeah, it's okay. I wait for him to settle a bit. So now, so there he goes. Relax again. So now I come in again, slow, but I come to the neck. And, and you got to bring your hand in low, right? And again, slow, not hesitant. And then I just touched the neck. Now you see, he became aware of that, but he didn't lift up his head. Now his eyes are gone back to relax again. And you see how slow and soft. I only got really one finger there because he got his head laid down. But it's just underneath the jowl, and you're just touching in one direction. Always just one direction because you're mimicking the lick. And I find going forward to backward instead of backward forward. So you're going with the grain of the fur instead of against it. So that's more comfortable. You move your hand through your hair against the grain or the hair on your arm. You feel it. It doesn't feel nice. But if you rub with the grain of your hair on your arm, it does. So you lick with the grain of the fur. So, we lick the neck until we see the eye soften, until we see the mind go back to level one relaxed. And that's when I start to bring my hand up over the cheek, licking the whole time. Now, a mother dog does lick the temple right here. And this is a very important touch, because what we want is the dog to relax. And what happens when the dog relaxes is this it softens its eyes, right? So when you touch up here, like this, it helps to soften that eye just for that second. And again, this touch is so gentle. You're just barely touching fur. Every single dog in the world is the same, folks. All these scared, little, nervous, insecure dogs, all the 
big ones too in shelters and places all over the world. This is all they need. So he just lifts his head. I think that's just because there's three other dogs on the other side. I just heard a little bang in there. So I think that's why he lifted his head. So I just go back to licking the neck here. See, now he just moved his head into my hand there. That was good. As I'm licking the neck, see, he lays down. I keep licking the neck. Come back up the face. Rub the temple. Once you have the relaxation in the eyes, the softness of the eyes, rubbing the temple, now you pet the head. And that's how he associates having his head pet means the same as having his neck licked. If you start to pet up here and he shows any concern about it at all, you immediately stop petting, come back here, and lick the neck again. You keep licking the neck until the eye softens. You start to move up the side of the face, lick the temple, and then pet the head. Very slow, very soft. Don't look the dog in the eye. If you do, close your eyes and soften your eyes like you're going to sleep. It's very, very, very important to not look at the dog when you're doing this. Whether you're laying on a bed or you're standing in front of them. And when you do look in the eye, you have to soften your eyes. Because whenever you look at a dominant dog without blinking, to the dog, you're challenging it, correcting it, or dominating it. That's it. Nothing else. All the affection and love goes right out the window. The eyes first. Everything else second. There's a good boy. So now I'll just stop petting him. And I just wait a little bit. And then I reach to pet him on the top of the head again first. To see if there's going to be any reaction to it. Okay. Now again, when I do this, I don't look at him. Very important not to look at him as you're reaching in to pet. If you do, you close your eyes. Completely close your eyes. So, Because the thing, difference here is... See, this is coming in head high, right? When you come in palm up, you're coming in head low. That's dominance. That's not. That's simple. There. So there, he didn't even become concerned about that touch. His eyes didn't open and he didn't look up. He remained soft in his eyes. So I'm going to thank him for that by licking his neck. Okay. Now I reach to pet his head again. He stayed relaxed. I thank him by licking his neck. Yeah. Yes, a good boy. So, when you have a dog that won't let you touch it, <coughs> whether the dog is moving away or the dog is coming at you, The first thing you have to do is get the dog to sit and not move away. For those dogs that are moving away, you have to use a leash to block that movement away. They'll never be able to experience your touch and understand that your touch means the physical affection of their mother if they never experience the touch. 
And if you keep letting them move away, they'll never experience the touch. Putting them on a leash, blocking them with the leash, getting them to sit, is not terrorizing them, is not forcing them, it's not being mean. Just because you can't do it doesn't mean someone like me can't. Okay? You put a leash on them, you block the movement, you get them to stop, you get them to sit, and then you stare at them till they stare at you. Then you blink your eyes, and you hold out your hand, palm up, and you lick their neck. That conversation is for the insecure dogs, the ones that move away from you. That conversation is, I'm your mom. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm no threat to you. All I want to do is love you. And I want to be able to express that love to you by licking your neck. I know I don't look like your mother. I know I don't look like a dog. But I want you to understand that in my heart and in my soul, I am a dog. And I am your dog mother. Now, there's nothing to move away from. There's nothing to be worried about. Just sit and relax and look at me, your ma. Ignore everything that's going on around you. Everything that's going on around you. And look at me. Your mom, your mother. When you get that look, that's the dog acknowledging, the insecure dog acknowledging that it doesn't have anything to worry about. It sees you standing in front of it, strong, confident, balanced, peaceful, loving. You have everything taken care of. And they're looking at you. And because you're looking at them, that is how you're communicating that you are not worried about anything that's going on around you. Because if you were, as the mother, you'd be looking at it. So because I'm not concerned about anything that's going on around us, you don't need to be worried about anything that's going on around us. And then once you have that focus and you blink, the blink, is how the mother dog says thank you. She doesn't speak English. She doesn't use words. She doesn't give him a treat. She blinks her eyes. It's not just about having a way of communicating to them when they're doing something wrong or inappropriate. You also have to have a way of communicating to them when they're doing something right. And that's what the blink communicates. Thank you. That's what I want you to do. Sit, relax focus on me. Now, I'm going to thank you for doing that by licking your neck. Now, if you have a dog that holds, when you try to touch it, it holds its ground, and if you keep moving it nips you or bites you, or a dog that comes right at you, they're dominant dogs. The first is a beta, the form of the latter is an alpha. Those dogs, the, the betas, most high level betas are strong enough, confident enough within their mind, within, you know, they have the courage to protect themselves when they need to. And that's why they're going to nip you and bite you if you keep trying to move them in, right? But they're not alphas. They're not born to be in front. They're born to support the ones who are in front, whether that's hunting or protecting the pack. <clears throat> so if they're holding their ground or, or moving forward as you move forward, um, the high level beta, that challenge is, it's usually a nip, very rarely a bite. Unbalanced high-level betas will bite, but it's, it's generally not a beta thing. The beta thing is to nip. The alpha thing is to bite. Now, what this beta is doing, the conversation they're having with you right now is, in that moment, is, 
I, I need a mother. I don't see a human being around me who represents the, the dog mother to me of safety, protection, love, affection, trust, respect, all the things that a dog mother represents to her puppies. If you're standing in front of me looking at me, that means you're challenging me. Now, if you're challenging me and that you want to be my mother, then you have to prove to me that you have more inner strength, courage, confidence, and ability to lead and, and protect me than I do to protect myself. Now, if I go, if you even if you come in and try to lick the neck, right, palm up, and this is, happens to me sometimes, um, you know, you, you, you're coming in with that palm up, they'll still nip you and bite you, right? Now, if you freak out and run and move away from the dog when they do that, when they nip you, bite you, the dog is looking at you saying, okay, you can't protect me. If, you, if you're not strong enough to stand up to me and mind it, then how am I to believe that you're going to be strong enough to stand up to a danger when, when, when it happens? You're just not. And if you're out walking with your dog on leash and you have another dog coming at you in, in, in an aggressive, territorial, dominant fashion and you end up behind your dog with your dog reactive out in front of you like that, your dog is looking right at you. Hey, you can't protect me. You're behind me. If you were my mom, you'd be in front of me. That other dog wouldn't even get near me. My mother would have that dog planted before it got anywhere near me. But you're behind me. So you're not my mom. And that's what that nip is. It's, it's a ta challenge test. See? So, if you just, they, they, they try to nip you or snap at you, bark at you, whatever, if you're just able in that moment to hold your ground and just go and hold your hand out like that, right? And what I'm saying in that moment is, hey, I'm your mom. You can't nip me, right? Now relax. Good. Blink my eyes. And I come in to lick the neck of the dog that just nipped me or bit me. Total calm, total relax, no fear. Pit bull Rottweilers. I've had a Rottweiler. I actually have her now, Jessie. Nipped me twice in the crotch going into her house. Within two seconds, she was sitting in front of me. Another few seconds, I was licking her neck. That's when that dog looks at you, that beta dominant dog looks at you and goes, okay. You can protect me. You are my mom. And a dominant dog that sees you, trusts you, respects you, and loves you as its mother will not have any concern about you touching it in any way. Because you're its mom. You can clean their ears, do their nails, all that kind of stuff. When we have dogs that have deep, deep psychological damage as a result of manhandling, getting nails done, or uh, when they've acted aggressive and stuff like that, they can take a, quite a lot longer to get to this point. Now, going back to the original conversation there, those dogs that as soon as you look at them, they come at you and bite you. As soon as you even think about trying to touch them, they come at you and bite you. They bite. They hold on. They mean business. They're alphas. They're the only dogs that we can truly consider aggressive. The alphas. And it's because of that fact that they will bite on and, and not let go. It's not a lockjaw thing. It's intentional. They do not need a mother. They're totally capable on their own. They can be out uh, like a lone wolf, alpha wolf. Um, will do pretty good on his own. They can hunt on their own. You know, to, to fearless, protect themselves. They don't need a mother. But just like all of us, they want a mother. puppies for the rest of their life will never forget this lick of their mother. They'll never forget it. 
if you try and out dominate it, right because it's not about being their friend with treats and it's not about being their alpha male and boss with trying to dominate them because if you try to out dominate an alpha dominant dog they will eat you for breakfast and then if you start beating the shit out of them to control them for eating you for breakfast they will never respect you never respect you but if you establish this relationship with that alpha to say I'm your mom then they'll bite everybody else in the world but they will never bite you again start with that temple top of the head see that's a good boy so there he's doing pretty good for his first night aren't you idiot? Now, Illy has been like this for a while. So it's going to take him a few days to really come back to normal, come out of his shell, get balanced. He's met some dogs through the fence, but I haven't introduced him one yet because before he goes with the dogs, we have to have a really good solid mother-son relationship so that when he does go in with the dogs he understands and knows in his heart and his soul that I'm going to protect him he's got nothing to worry about you no longer need to be territorial towards other dogs he's going to learn that dogs mean fun he's going to become part of this family part of this pack Hey baby boy, you'll see him play soon. So just remember folks, especially people in rescues, if you have a nervous, anxious, unsure, insecure, and sometimes fearful dog, who cower and move away, every time you try to pet up on the head stop talking to them words make it worse stop trying to pet them on the head and stop looking at them turn sideways to them hold out your hand palm up like this In most cases just wait until they come and smell you and then touch you when they touch you reach out to lick your neck just be patient be calm and make sure to blink your eyes soften your eyes whenever you look at them I had a chihuahua here who was fearful really fearful there's not many they're very very rare a true fear but he was fearful for two years and he spent a year of that in a rescue and another year with a very wonderful woman, his mother, who loved him very much. But for that entire year, she couldn't touch him. And for a year, nobody in the rescue could touch him. I was looking his neck to, within minutes of meeting him, first day. Just lick their neck, people. Whenever you want to thank your dog, especially for coming to you. This is the basis of recall, lick in the neck. A dog doesn't come to you because they have to, they come to you because they want to. And nothing creates that desire more than affection. When I was a child, my father, my grandfather, my mother as well, you'd look and they'd have their arms opened up, held out. When you ran to get that hug, that's what that signal meant. And that's what this hand held out palm up means. Come so I can give you a hug. You do it a hundred times a day. Sitting on the couch, in the kitchen, 
out in the yard. Doesn't matter. Every single time your dog comes towards you on its own, hold out your hand. They'll come smell it, touch it, and then you lick their neck. So we're still working on that with Illy here. I'm holding out the hand. See, it doesn't smell, see. It's just a little tiny of a slightest little sniff he gave. But he's not really into smelling yet. Again, I just licked the neck. And that's how you help him. Lots of patience. Lots of love. And understanding their body language. The eyes, the ears, the head, the muscles, the fur, the tail. So this is Ellie's first morning. I'm gonna go for a bit of a walk here. So I'm relaxed. it again. He's gonna sit this way. So I can go to eat. That's exactly what you do when you leave your house too. Sit, relax, sit, relax, sit, relax. Get some reflection. Get the leash. No problem now. Oh, yeah, he's so good boy. Gotta get that le ne neck lick in now. Yeah, he's a good boy. Start off with a short leash. Because they always have to follow first. So the second that he starts to speed up, or second he starts to move forward to my leg, I just make the noise. <coughs> and if needed, I give a little, just a little tiny, a little snap of the leash. See? It's just a flick of the wrist. When their energy is high and focus is high, the assertive level of the correction has to be higher. So his energy is calm, is low, his focus is low, low energy. So one of his big things is reactivity to vehicles. So we will just stop. So you see the TIS is not only corrections, it's also commands. Sit down, stay. So now, just give a little bit of affection. Move them. So. Yeah, 
if he focuses on the vehicle, he just gives a little correction to say, no, don't focus on that. Just focus on mom. And get the affection. So now when I see that it's safe, everything is good, I say go play. Go play. And now he can go do what he wants. So I bring him to an off the road. So I want to start using the nose. Go play. Come on. And I encourage him to move forward. There you go. Good boy. Come on. Go play. Go see. Come on. Hmm? Yeah. There they are in the yard. Up here, starting to hear it. So, again, with the focus, I just make it this close. You can look at it with your ears back, you just can't look at it with your ears forward. Ears forward, focus on something else, ears back to focus on you. It's not about having them in a completely high energy state, completely focused on you 100% of the time when you're walking. It's about having them in a calm, relaxed state. Just out for a walk. Okay. Just out for a walk. Hey! So they can never put tension in the leash. Just can, okay? They just can never be tension in the leash. Tension in the leash means that there is no leash to be moving away. Here he's learning boundary. I I only want you that far away from me. So as soon as they they start to pull on the leash, so you get that tension in the leash. You can't snap it. So you got to give. See, give the leash to get some some slack in it and then give the little snap back so it's a fluid motion of 
your hand goes forward and then snap back, forward and snap back. As soon as they pull, you're just saying, no, don't pull. Okay. Oh, still a little flinchy, I know. Good boy, don't go play. Good boy, come on. Good boy. Good boy come on. I think holding the camera on him all the time, it's, it's like I'm, I'm looking at him. There we go. That's better. So when he's in front, so right there I feel a little bit of tension. I just just give a little snap to the leaf. Every time he looks back and looks at me, I look at him and I blink my eyes. And that's what I'm saying, good boy. Good job. Good job. I'm saying it with your eyes. There's only two reasons dogs go for a walk. They're either patrolling the territory or they're hunting. That's it. They don't just go for a walk. The people just go for a walk. So, all the sniffing and smelling, being alert, being territorial, all of that is about hunting and patrolling the territory. But puppies don't do any of that when they're following their mother. They just follow their mother. And that's the conversation I have with these dogs through simple corrections and an affection. That I'm your mother. You don't need to worry about anything that's going on around us. We could be at a gun range. Doesn't matter. Just ignore everything that's going on around us. Focus on me. You mind telling me, and I'll give you affection. And that's how you teach them. Not even 24 hours. Yesterday she'd be going crazy after these cars. So now she knows she doesn't have to worry about them. Heat. Good boy.